welcome to episode two of Cables and Coffee. I'm here with Greg, Anna, one of our technicians here. Greg, what are we going to do today? Hey, good morning, Ross. Uh, today we're going to make our Bronze Dragon interconnects, which are a relatively new product for us. Um, we're going to make these a foot and a half long. And for this particular cable, we're going to use the FureTech 3-pin XLRs which are uh, gold-plated connectors. Very, uh, very nice connectors. Really well-made, rock solid. Um, so, so if you're just joining us for the first time, this is Cables and Coffee, one of our new series here, where we build uh, one, a couple of cables uh, live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and we wanna hear your questions. We wanna hear uh, your questions about the process, uh, if you have any ideas as to how you might use these cables that we're making, we'd love to hear them too. So Greg, without further ado, you want to take it away? Sure. Yeah. How about I start with uh, what we use to get to this point here? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So <clears throat> obviously you see the bronze dragon heat shrink. That'll be a, the final step, but it's important that it's in there now. So this cable is made of eight strands of pure copper, uh, solid, each wire is a solid wire, and they're braided together, and that helps uh, reduce uh, RF interference. Gotcha. Then the next layer is a copper shielding. It's kind of a little difficult to see, but we'll see more in a minute. And this further shields it from uh, signal interference as well as this will be become our uh, pin one or ground gotcha. in the XLR. And then we have a layer of like a brownish golden tech flex. And then finally a black tech flex layer. And that just gives the cable a lot of durability and you can see the shielding coming through the tech flex. And it's aside from being functional, it's a super nice look, I think. Yeah, I love so, it. Yeah, yeah, we took a we took a lot of time and a lot of tech flex samples trying to get the right look, nice. and this is what we landed on. So um, I'm going to make these one at a time. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim back the tech flex about an inch on each end. Okay. When I do that. I got these little little scissors here. Those look pretty fancy. I don't know if I saw those last week. Also makes me notice that I see some other tools that happen to have GH on them. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Greg? I would love to. Um, so some of these tools that say GH on them. Those are, of course, my initials. Um, I don't like sharing my tools, <laughs> and some people haven't learned that yet. I'm not going <laughs> to drop any names. He knows who he is. Uh, he's, you know, I'll, I'll come out and say it. He will take your tools. <laughs> Got it on record. Yeah. So when I go around trying to find my cutters or stripper, I look for the ones that say GH. <laughs> and I walk up to the person and I speak French. And I say, <laughs> J'accuse. <laughs> and uh, take my tools back where they belong. Yeah, I do not share tools. Um, it's funny, even like when my neighbors ask for like the the uh, always missing 10 millimeter socket, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like, nope. You don't have one of those. <laughs> oh, I have plenty. <laughs> I know, yeah. I do. You don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's the other thing. We need to be careful, Ross, because with you and I, this could become uh, cars and coffee <laughs> and, or trains and coffee. Yeah, exactly. Right? So. Yeah. So we got someone commented here. Um, mm -hmm. They agreed with what what they said about uh, agreed. Hands off my stuff. Right. My yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not difficult. Yeah. Get your own tools. They're not that expensive. Um, yeah. Please just get your own tools. <laughs> you know? Thanks for your comment. The one in yellow. Yes, that was good. All right. So what I'm doing here is, uh, like I said earlier, we're using the shielding for ground pin one 
that we're not going to need all of it. So what I'm doing, <clears throat> separating the, the braid on just the shielding. And I'm going to grab just enough to give us our PIM1 connection. And it'll be a lot clearer here in a moment. You know, Greg, I forgot to ask you at the beginning. Mm -hmm. What kind of coffee are you drinking this morning? I am drinking that uh, espresso blend. The, the uh, Cafe Bustelo? Yes, uh, yeah. Yes. I know I would botch the uh, <laughs> pronunciation, so well, thank you for handling I don't even know if I have it right, but <laughs> give it my best shot. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, too, and one of our favorites in the office here. I think I actually have some Green Mountain... Uh, the Breakfast? Curry. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, what's it called? Nantucket blend. Ah, yes. Reminds, Another one of our reminds me here. of a joke. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so you can see right here, and you see a lot, lot more clear. Our uh, eight braids, four covered in white, uh, four covered in clear, and now our shielding, which I've uh, twisted, which has become our pin one. Gotcha. Let me take this heat shrink here, slide it over the end there. I'm going to carefully, because under heat, this tech flex will, will melt for sure. And just like that, that keeps all the, uh, any fraying at bay, keeps everything nice and neat. So, that's great. thank you. We're going to do the same on the other end here. So if you're just now tuning in, this is our new series called Cables and Coffee, where we build cables live uh, in front of you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We'd love to answer them. Uh, and thanks so much for tuning in. Yeah, and again, I, I might even be willing to entertain any questions. Seriously, <laughs> any we can questions. go a AMA. <laughs> Ask me anything. Cable it's AMA. fine. Yeah. You want to talk to Ross and I about cables, trains, JDM cars, maybe? <laughs> Excess shielding here. Okay, then we have the same thing on this end. <clears throat> All right. So nice. now we got to this point. I'm gonna make one cable at a time. That's yeah. cool with you. That's totally cool with me. All right. So we got another comment from the one in yellow. Yes. Uh, just a comment. He's saying not a big coffee drinker, but he's got a hot pot with tea. Okay. So awesome. Yeah, I like I enjoy teas too. We got a whole cabinet at home, my wife and I with a bunch of different teas. Sometimes it's just a nice relaxing uh, evening type of vibe. So, this is a cru crucial step for me as I remove this, uh, I guess you call it a nut. These are the Furitech. These are the right? Furitech 70s gotcha. with the gold plated connectors. A really nice solid. I always slip these on first, Ross. Okay. Because you solder it up and you forgot. <laughs> Oh, you know what? You see that little black vice on my desk? It's laying down yeah. flat. I'm going to need yeah, that. Fine. Thank you. Happy to. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Appreciate it. That's crucial. <laughs> okay. So, with our interconnects, with the three pin XLR, they always flow from female to male, hence the uh, bronze dragon.
directional arrow. Uh, so. And so with these links, you know, I've seen on other cables we've had that have, you know, the bronze dragon or whatever dragon it is near the connectors itself. But for this one, it's going in the middle. Right. Why that, is that? That all depends on cable length. Okay. And a lot of it depends on uh, the termination type as well. So say if we use a WBT uh, okay. RCA, gotcha. which is an, a great option for this, um, there will be a, a directional heat shrink on each end uh, as part of the overall process. Okay. If it's XLRs, once they get uh, to the four, four and a half foot range, then we'll put a directional arrow on each end to make okay. it easier for the uh, end user to hook up their gear. And again, just to remind our viewers, the, the, the arrow points from what to what? It's the, is it the source? The source to the receiver. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I got my female connector and my little bench top vise. But first, this is a care, uh, another crucial step. I separate these, uh, this braid apart. And when you're going to strip these wires, it's crucial not to nick. And if it's a, a stranded core, it's real important not to cut any of the little strands. So I'm gonna strip back about an eighth of an inch on each one of these. Okay. It is, yeah. You just want to be careful not to nick them because as you twist twist the leads together, if it has a nick, it could it could certainly break off. So So how many of those individual strands again do we have there? Uh, eight in total, okay. so four are going to be for the positive, Got and it. four will be for the negative. And there's different numbers of cables in our different Dragon Cable uh, interconnects, right? Or is it all eight? Do you know? Uh, depends on, it depends on the interconnect. Okay. So the bronze is very similar to the silver, except that this is all copper. Mm -hmm. um, the silver, it's all silver, gotcha. but it's the same exact uh, braided eight lead. Type of core. Of, um, uh, I remember hearing that it's it's UPOCC uh, copper and silver. Right. What exactly is that again? It it that's just a, a, a purity rating. Okay. And uh, when it comes to audio, you know, uh, pure is better. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> and silver, silver and copper are like two of the best uh, signal conductors on the planet, gotcha. without a doubt. So. What I'm going to do is twist. These are going to be my positive, aka pin two. Okay. Just twist them like that. I'm going to tin it. Add it. Also, tin our ground. comment from a broke audio file who says it's great seeing how the dragon cables are built Thanks thank you so thanks thank for you. tuning in yeah it's fun to show uh show how it's done honestly i love uh i love all those shows like uh how it's made and uh, yeah same, same exactly. like the old uh back in the 2000s right, right yeah yep. monster garage oh, yeah. Um, all that stuff love it All the chopper building shows, yeah. loved them all. Yeah, I almost got to be involved in one of the chopper building shows. Really? Back then, yeah. That's cool. My friend uh, 
one of those episodes featured uh, Chica Custom Cycles in Orange County. Mm-hmm. And my buddy Johnny was Chica's right-hand man. And I just bought an old Harley, and Johnny and I were talking about it. And I go, well, dude, let's just put on a show, right? Yep. <laughs> He's like, well, that'd be a good way to pay for parts. Nice. <laughs> uh, sadly, Johnny, uh, he had a heart transplant when he was a kid. And, you know, it finally caught up with him, yeah. sadly. But uh, it was still cool to be, you know. Like, I remember when, Ch- when Chica's episode... <clears throat> Uh, debuted. I was at Chica's house and we had a big uh, pizza party at his house and we were all watching that. So that was fun. So you're on to soldering now. Yeah, what I'm doing now is just uh, tinning the uh, lugs on the connector. So you're not technically connecting anything in. You're just putting some of that tin in there to, to be ready for it. Exactly. Okay. Just make it real simple. And then, although I like to say I have it memorized, I always look to see the pin assignment on the connector. Because when RCA came out with these back in uh, the 30s or 40s. Oh, wow. Um, like the original XLR came, back, came out then? They invented the original XLR. Oh, wow, that's cool. So when you look at it like this, Here's pin one, mm-hmm. here's pin two, here's pin three. Gotcha. Why doesn't it go one, two, three, right? Oh, yeah. That, that makes sense. I don't know the legend behind <laughs> it, but uh, a mystery there. that's the way it started. <laughs> yeah. Maybe somebody knows that's watching. Yeah, maybe. You know? Let us or you know can Google it. <laughs> Google RCA XLR Connector. So. <clears throat> it's funny, uh, David Royer of Royer Labs was telling me that story. He's like a, only David would know odd, oddball odd weird. History like yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> so our positive leads are going to be pin two. So He shall, sh- he who shall remain nameless. The man that likes to steal my tools also adjusted my soldering iron. Oh man, I can't yeah. imagine who would do that. I know. I will rise above, I'll be the better man, boss. <laughs> All right, so pin three, which your brain tells you should be pin two. Thank you, RCA. Uh-huh. RCA, you're, you're saying the company, but RCA is also a type of connector, right? Correct, correct, correct. correct. Yeah. R- RCA was the, was the radio. Uh, I'm trying to remember the actual name of the company, but um, so why, I can't. Yeah. I can't remember what RCA stands for. Somebody will chime in. I'm yeah, sure. Radio. It is radio. radio that's probably it. That's probably it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's hitting the spot, I must say. <laughs> hitting the spot. All right. We're going to solder pin one, a.k.a. ground. So we've got a comment from uh, Nick from Means asking, uh, what kind of solder are you using? I am using <clears throat> uh, Cardus Audio Flux Core Solder. It's what we use 99% of the time. Okay. Um, for our premium line of cables, we use a uh, pure silver solder. So um, this, this, as far as like uh, your 
your standard everyday audio solder, I don't think it can be beat. It's really good solder. Yeah. So then what I'm gonna do is tin the rest of this ground. Okay, so we got our female XLR in place. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So these uh, interconnect cables, we sell them in pairs, right? Yeah, they're sold in pairs. Um, How challenging is it to get them the exact same length? Oh, not at all. What yeah. we'll do is like say, uh, like these are foot and a half. Okay. Uh, what I'll do is I'll cut out a three foot long piece. Okay. And then uh, and cut that in half. Oh, it just okay. makes it. That's a that's a good method. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Cool people are asking questions. Just makes it a lot more fun, I think. Yeah. All right, same procedure. Carefully separate the braid out. So are those, uh, the, I see the copper strands, are they covered in something? Yeah, this is a, a Teflon insulator. Okay, gotcha. So different wires have different you know, some use rubber, some use more like a plastic. This is a Teflon, uh, which makes it, in my opinion, a lot easier to strip. Yeah. Um, maybe you've seen like on old guitar amps or radio gear, if you crack them open, sometimes you can s still see the original cloth covered. Yeah. Which looks cool, yeah. but yeah, it's a fire <laughs> trap. Yeah, you it know? Be the same as modern cables. Exactly. And it's like I love hearing. Uh, like vintage guitar amp guys talk about, you know, point to point wiring and cloth wires and stuff. And I'm like, you know, look, if Leo Fender had access to printed circuit boards back in the 50s, he would have used them. Yeah, you know? exactly. So if you're just now tuning in, this is Cables and Coffee, where we build some dragon cables for Moon Audio uh, right here live on video, on YouTube, on Facebook, and Twitter. So if you have any questions for us, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the process. If you have any questions about how our cables are made, we'd love to answer them. So Greg right now is building the Bronze Dragon Interconnect cable, which is actually one of our newer cables. Yep, great cable. Yeah, Chris uh, downstairs loves these yeah. Bronze Dragons. And as much as I dig the craftsmanship with our cables, um, and I, I, I definitely hear the difference between uh, stock cables and our headphone cables, I can hear the difference. Yeah. Uh, sadly, the nuances <clears throat> are lost on me just because of my, my hearing. Gotcha. So. All right. Um, let's see. So the one in yellow, we appreciate all your questions. So you do not have to apologize for your questions. We appreciate it. Not at all. So what is, uh, what is the highest gauge of wire that Moon Audio or yourself are comfortable to work with? Oh, we, we work with it all. Uh, that's a cool question, honestly. Um, we're comfortable with all of it. I would say the heaviest gauge wire we use, um, I don't have my larger format strippers in front of me but all of the uh, speaker or speaker cable and power cable uh -huh. uses very, very high gauge. large gauge wire yeah. it's, it's a lower the number the bigger the cable 
exactly yeah. exactly so i don't remember the exact number but um it's it's huge you get that uh get that signal flow happening yeah. but yeah we we do it all you know tiny to tiny to large so thanks so much for your questions sure and uh so we got one more uh Anthony, uh, how many connectors would you guess you have in-house that you need? Oh, wow. <laughs> like types of connectors, I guess? Well, sheer number of everything combined, I I don't know. You can't really yeah. see it, but behind behind the cameras here, we have this yeah. huge wall of parts and connectors. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's got to be hundreds of drawers of, just, of stuff. Like this just here is just, that's a very small. I, you know what I think? Who asked that? Anthony? Anthony. I'd say, Anthony, name the most obscure connector you can possibly think of, and I will honestly tell you if we have it or not, <laughs> because I'm, I pretty much guarantee you that we have yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see if he gets back to us right. on that. Okay, again, I'm checking the, the pin assignment because it's, it's opposite of the female, yep. so... Mm -hmm. uh, for a broke audio file, what is your favorite interconnect to build? Um, for building, uh, you know, I don't know if I have a particular favorite for building. I do like building uh, the W, the uh, WT, WBT brand RCAs. Uh -huh. It's a nice connector. Uh, Cardus makes great RCAs. I like building them with the uh, FureTech XLRs. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite uh, connector. Yeah. But it's still it's still an interesting question, you know? Yeah, Makes you think about that stuff. It's like when you get asked your favorite music artist, you know? It's tough. <laughs> How do you actually answer that? How right, I mean, because it changes for me every day, yeah. you know? It's like, in fact, I can't even think of, like, who I've been, like, listening to lately. You know what I mean? Yeah. See the uh, one in yellow asked if we have a Limo connector. Limo. Uh, yeah, we got Limos. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I know Daryl will appreciate that question. What's up, Ricky? Just, uh, hey. hey, I'm going to raid the stream. Raid it, I'm going to raid the stream. Welcome to the stream, Ricky. <laughs> Greg here. Big That's fan right. of Greg. Big Thank fan. you, Ricky. Thank you. Keep up the good work, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. Ross, that was Ricky. Uh, you know, I was wondering <laughs> who it was. <laughs> I'm sure people have seen Ricky in the other videos. You know, I, yeah, he's, he's been in a couple, I think, right? <laughs> he's been in a few. Yeah. Yep. Okay, same thing. After I get it terminated, I like to go back and solder up. Pim one lead. Speaking of Ricky, our writers here, it reminds me last week how um, it slipped my mind to get uh, Daryl, who was uh, building cables last week, or not last week, two weeks ago on our on our last cables and coffee. Uh, slipped my mind to get him some coffee, and uh, Sara, our own of our other reviewers, graciously uh, uh, brewed him a pot. Brought him a, a, a cup. Pot, but cups. <laughs> right on up. So that was really appreciated. We have coffee drinkers here, so everybody understands. Okay, so all done with the termination. Nice. The next step, what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that the uh, our connectors are orientated properly for a final assembly. So where our male end is sitting, that looks good. And what I'm going to do is when they're connected, the female connector is going to be at the top okay. and the male at the bottom. So I'm going to want to gently turn that. So that's all done. It's going to look like that. And the heat shrink, the label is going to be facing the outside. So when you look at the back of your audio gear, like all you can... We like all the logos facing the same way, the same distance yeah. from the end. Very 
Um, I like that attention to detail. Yeah, I do too. And I mean, it's it's a lot of the any kind of custom motorcycle, custom car uh, aesthetic. I mean, it's got to be functional. That's first thing. But then, I mean, geez, you want it to look awesome, you know? Yeah, for sure. You really do. Whoops. Sorry if I distracted you. <laughs> no, no worries. Okay, so it screws on there. Nice. Right. When it screws on there, this clamps down. Okay. It, it's a uh, it's a nice it's a nice strain relief. Yeah. I need to do a little adjustment here. I'm gonna make that a little shorter. Oh, here's a here's a good question. Mm -hmm. Another one from Warm Yellow. Okay. Uh, it's for you, Greg. Do you listen right. to music as you work? And if so, what gear, headphones, uh, speakers, etc.? Okay, I do listen to music while we're here and um, I like the uh, lately I've been using the, uh, the Focal wireless uh, Bluetooth are they the listens or the I can't remember the name the yeah the listens yeah. yeah I think that's it they're sitting over there recharging okay <clears throat> so yeah I do quite a bit or you know listen to podcasts things like that um, also watch uh yeah, these are the ones I use mostly. Nice. Like the color. Mm. Yeah, it's a good color. It's a nice purple pearlescent. Yeah. They sound great. They sound great to me. Um, I do have a Sennheiser headphone amp yeah. at my workbench for testing. So when I'm testing headphone cables, yeah. um, I get to listen to all the headphones and uh, when I get asked as far as my personal favorite for headphones is concerned um, definitely Grado with the blue uh, blue dragon oh, okay. hack yep and I would say overall headphone wise and again everybody's different and that's the cool thing Headphone cable wise, I'm definitely a Blue Dragon fan. You know, like that clear signal, you know, whatever. Um, that clean signal without kind of any coloration to it. There's that um, with the, uh, in my opinion, with the Blue Dragon. There's there's no. Uh, it's very smooth on my ears, and even though I have very, uh, I have tinnitus. I have a 90% hearing loss in my left ear and a 45% loss in my right ear. Um, there's nothing, sometimes uh, different headphones, different cables, it can be, it can be very harsh to my hearing. So um, if you like uh, something like a really smooth sound and yeah, I know these terms are subjective, but I find it hard to beat the Blue Dragon myself. Good choice. <laughs> I think so. All right, what I'm doing is uh, just carefully trimming these back a little bit because uh, they come a little too long. But yeah, we all listen to a lot of music here, right, Ross? Oh, yeah, we're all music lovers. Right? Music lovers, yeah. I'm uh, personally a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, which I know is not for everyone, but uh, I grew up listening to him and uh, been trying to go to his uh, most recent show. But, uh, like with the whole Taylor Swift fiasco and the Ticketmaster stuff going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was just a little too pricey. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, uh, I hope I can see him another time, though. It's, I think I've actually seen him uh, six times. Yeah, that's what, that's what I've been talking about with uh, 
you bring up a good point though it's like I, i've been talking about this with my wife i'm like look if there's somebody we want to go see play live go because you just never know yeah. i'm not trying to sound morbid or anything yeah. but you just never know when you're not going to be able to see them yeah you know so another comment from uh, the one in yellow it says music is music enjoy what you like on the gear you love we couldn't say it any better Thanks, yeah that's man. uh I, and that's it you know you can um the world of audio is so subjective you know yeah, it's exactly. You got to go with what you like and not, you know, and that's all there is to it. Okay. So now I have these uh, orientated correctly okay. the way I like. Next step is going to be the final step, and that is uh, measure out. And with the uh, XLR's foot and a half cable comes out to about. Yeah, 20 inches every time. Oh yeah, so I didn't even think about that with the, with the actual connectors. You've got to factor in the, the length there when you match them up. Well, and, and to talk about that some more, Ross, when somebody orders whatever the length of the cable is, mm -hmm. that's what we cut the actual cable at. Gotcha. So we don't try to like factor in, well, with the connectors, yeah. then it'll be three feet. The cable is cut to three feet. Gotcha. So you're gonna get a tad extra in the end. Yeah. You know? There you go. More yeah. value. <laughs> More value, but that way you, you yeah, know yeah, you, know, exactly. you know for sure it's gonna be you know, three foot or whatever the length you're going for. All right, so I have this centered in the cable. And this step is pretty crucial. And so <clears throat> when I heat this up, of course you don't want the heat directly on the tech flex, like I was saying, it will instantly melt it. So this uh, yardstick is metal and it makes a great reflector. Oh, okay. And this is a step you do not want to rush. You just take your time. The heat shrink will shrink. So this is our finished product. So now, this is the top where the female is and the bottom where the male is. You can see, there we go. Nice. The direction of dragon head. So awesome. you climb behind your gear, try to find out what got unhooked or anything. You can see, well, my dragons are still hooked up the way they should be. So that's like, you know, the way I like to look at it. Like, what do I want to see when I open up a package from yeah. moon audio this is what you want to see you know something you're like oh yeah this is cool you know well thanks so much for joining us we really appreciate all your questions and uh this has been our second episode but uh, tune in uh in two weeks for our next one and if you have any uh, requests for which cables you'd like for us to build please let us know thanks everybody thanks a bunch for watching and we'll see you next time